I thought a club was, and it's been this way for the last maybe three weeks of our season. We're tight as a club. We're, we're more of a team now than we were earlier in the year. And I'd love to have, been, I'd love to have said, hey, we're a really good team in December and January, but we weren't. We were just kind of fractured a little bit. Our kids were working real hard, but it wasn't a real, uh, what I think, what I think of good teams. And I think that's one of the uh, biggest upgrades we've made. I think they feel like they're a team. They, they uh, trust each other. They really work hard together. And uh, so you can't really look at records because, you, you know, how are you playing the you know, last five games? How are you playing the last four games as you go down the stretch here? So uh, we're not a typical seventh seed uh, for a number of reasons. But right now we're, we're certainly capable of uh, uh, playing a game like we did tonight. I thought Joseph Wall was outstanding tonight. Uh, you know, he's looking at, you know, the top offensive team in the league and maybe the nation. Uh, I don't know what St. Cloud is, but uh, he was outstanding with his play. Uh, I thought David Cotton is fast becoming uh, one of the top forwards in the country. And Mike Kim has really progressed as a defenseman. So I feel very good about the uh, chance to play again tomorrow night. Uh, we've been talking about one game, one game, and you know how do we advance into the hockey's playoffs? We got to win one game. Uh, then when we got to win against Providence, we got to win one game. So the same idea was tonight. We don't have to win two to win the Lamarillo uh, Trophy. We need to win one game. Uh, but it was just a really good effort from the Eagles, and uh, I wish uh, a number of the UMass players, uh, you know, really good luck in the NCAA tournament because I think they got a team that can go deep into that that tournament. Uh, I'm sure they will. All right, we'll open up for questions again. Just raise your hand and state your name and affiliation after we get you the mic. Dave Hendrickson, U.S. College Hockey Online. How much do you think the fact that your team is so much more experienced on the big stage here than UMass was, which is getting here for the first time, how, how much was that experience factor important for you? You know, uh, probably a little bit, but, you know, but certainly, uh, it's the type of team you bring in to play, and they brought a very good team in here to play. Uh, I thought our team was fast becoming a very good team. So I think the experience is maybe not that big a factor. It's, I can't speak for their players and their coaches, but uh, they've played in a lot of big games this year. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not quite sure that. Sometimes it's overrated a little bit, that experience. Uh, Kyle Mazin, WZBC. Uh, Coach, what did you really see that was different from your team tonight than the last couple of times you played UMass? Because you lost two real close, heartbreaking games, while today you really did a good job of getting in front and staying in front. Well, I, I thought that those games were indicative of, you know, really where we turned our season because, you know, you went up there to play and, you know, went right to the three, four seconds left from the game when they, they uh, won it. But we played extremely well. And I thought we played extremely well uh, back at uh, Conti Forum. Uh, but our team's got better because of those games. But I think that's probably that stretch of games uh, from UMass to where we were now. Uh, we'll continue to improve. But uh, I think that gave us a lot of confidence because UMass was such a strong team that all of a sudden we went up there and played them to a standstill, I thought, in, in our spot also. Josh Wall for Sterling Hampshire Cassette. Co Coach, what, what did you feel like you guys did well to kind of frustrate UMass and kind of not let them get their offense really set up for the first two periods? I thought we checked really well. You know, covered people, uh, you know, whether it was on the f four check, making it harder for them to break out of the zone, or, or the back check, it limited their chances. I just thought we played in sync and very cohesive through all three zones. And, you know, that took that to advance the the championship uh, tomorrow night. We had to be, you know, not just good offensively, but right through the three zones. Mike and then John. All right, Coach, obviously, uh, Mike McMahon, College Hockey News. Uh, obviously, your team needs to win in order to advance, so the same was true last weekend. Right. Do you think that, that desperation has, has brought a new level out in your guys over the last two weeks? Well, I think, I think any team that plays with that in mind, nobody wants to give up their sticks, you know, and. Yeah, you know, UMass knew they were going to play you know, longer into the season. 
uh, we fully understand that if we don't win tonight, our sticks are gone. And, you know, we love hockey, coaches, our players, and I think, yeah, there's a little more desperation in our game. You know, whether it's blocking a shot or, or uh, you know, coming back on the back check. So I think you're right. It's, it's hard to take people's sticks away from them. You know, that's no question. Yeah, um, Coach, um, um, John Powers from the Globe. Uh, this is the second time you've been playing Northeastern for title in this building. Yeah. Uh, you're going to go double or nothing on the bean pot with them? Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy and I will have to talk tomorrow morning uh, as we go. But our, our varsity team showed up tonight, they did. John, and they played very, very well. Uh, you know, and you have to look back, you know, we have you mirror, hey, how did we play tonight? But, yeah, Northeastern, they've, uh, they've had a tremendous last three or four years. And, you know, all of us thought that with the lineup they lost from last year, that they'd come down a little bit. But they haven't. They haven't missed a beat. I mean, they're right back at it. and um, So it should be an outstanding game tomorrow night. Two of the best goal tents in the country go head-to-head -head again. Take one more for Coach, if it's there. Uh, Luke Pacini, The Heights. Coach, you talked about how the team's tighter than ever than it was uh, previously yeah. in the season. What exactly has led to that change? You know, I think uh, an acceptance from our seniors of our junior class, the juniors or the sophomores, of, of soft, right down through the freshmen. So it just takes a while. I wish I had the magic, you know, pill to say, all right, in October we're going to be an unbelievable team. Uh, but basically we have, a, we have a list of players that forms a squad. You know, we send that to all the NCAA. Here's, they want our squad list, and we all have that. Now, to become a team, you know, and, and the adversity, I think, that, that we hit, through the course of the year helps a little bit too, you know. Nobody likes to go through it, but boy, you get tighter and tighter as a club. And so I, I give a lot of credit to our three captains. I think Fitzy, Kimmer, and Brownie uh, really held us together. And I remember the, uh, one of the wins we had late in the year. I think it might have been, uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, yeah, Northeast had a place that uh, Casey stood up and said, uh, you know, it's been a rocky year for us, win-loss record. We didn't, we didn't expect this. We didn't want this. But I'll tell you what, guys, I really enjoyed being with this group of guys through this. Uh, and that's hard to do. You know, you're seventh in the league, and you hey, I really enjoyed it. But he did, and he was honest with it.